everyone, it's Christy with Cottage Grove Quilt Company. I'm coming to you today from my sewing studio and we are going to talk today about paper piecing. Paper piecing, when I say those words, or foundation piecing, or you know, anything like that, I get this look from all the quilters in the audience. Ah, I don't like paper piecing. I can't do paper piecing. Well, or I don't know what paper piecing is. So I'm hoping today we're gonna take some of the fear out of paper piecing. So let's talk a lot of what you're gonna need for paper piecing. First off, you're gonna need a little pattern. For this, we're using what's called stable foundation. And this was a pattern pre-printed onto um, stabilizer. So um, this will actually stay in my quilt, but um, this is actually just a pre-printed pattern. You're gonna need a add a quarter ruler right here, which uh, we do sell. And what this is, it's got a quarter inch lip right here. I think you should be able to see that raised lip. And that makes adding a quarter inch just perfectly. You'll need just a regular basic um, ruler. This is my one of my favorite rulers, my little Omni Grid. Um, and then you will need a very sharp rotary blade. Um, and then I do this at my um, sewing table. So I have here a cutting mat and then off to the side here a very hot iron. Okay, so those are the tools you're going to need. So let's talk a little bit about paper piecing. Um, you know, it's a traditional form of quilting. It's been around since quilters have been quilting. Um, you know, it used to be um, you would draw a pattern out onto freezer paper onto pattern paper onto a newspaper and um, then use that to stitch on and stitch on your blocks and then just pull it apart. Um, so it's been around for a very, very long time and it's just a great way to um, get some really intricate points. For example, this is one of the other pieces that we're working on in this and look at those sharp, crisp points. You know, you're only going to get points like this and sharpness by sharpness I mean not that the you'll you're not going to lose the points what I'm talking about is the angle these are very narrow very sharp angled points the only way you're going to get those is with paper piecing at least that has been my experience so um, when do I see paper piecing projects when I see unusual shapes like instead of a regular flying goose it's um, any long it's it's still the same width but it's a little taller but it's not as tall as a triangle and a square um, I will see things you know like Christmas trees like crazy patterns some of those are paper pieced string quilting is a form of paper piecing so all of those are types of things that I'll see for paper piecing things that require extensive sharp points um, like this particular project that I'm working on are unusual shapes that aren't a traditional geometric shape. Those are going to come from paper piecing. So um, it's definitely something you want to invest in learning and learn how to do paper piecing. So with that, we're going to head over to, um, we're going to start at the ironing board. Okay, so we are here at our ironing table and what I am going to do first is on my pattern you can see these lines and these are actually going to be our sew lines. But what I want to do first is I actually want to iron those lines um, very crisply with my iron. So what does that mean? What do I mean when I say I want to iron those with my iron? So I'm going to fold this right on that line just like so, and I'm gonna give it a little press. And why am I doing this? Well, you'll see in a minute, when I go to start adding my fabric, it'll be really helpful to know exactly where that fabric needs to be placed. And by doing these, ironing this in advance, I will have those really sharp, um, lines so when I start adding my fabric I can certainly see where I'm going with things okay one more and again this step just takes a minute just to you know again I'm just pressing it all in place okay 
whoops. Now that wasn't supposed to happen that way. I moved it with my iron. All right, let's get it back the way it needs to be. There we go. All right, so see, you can have all those pressed and where they need to be. All right, so now we're gonna go to our sewing machine. Okay, so we're back here at my cutting table and my sewing machine's right here next to me. And I wanna do a little explaining about um, what I'm looking at on this, um, on this pattern. So you can see it says 1A, 2C, 3C, 4C. Now the letters here indicate different colors, you know, for the pattern. Um, for the A is the background, C1, C2 are the different accents, fabrics, whatever. Um, but what I'm really focused at is these circles, or these numbers right here, the one, not the circles, sorry, the one, the two, the three, the four. What that means is for me in this particular pattern, and every pattern is labeled a little differently, but I'm going to start here with 1A. So this fabric right here is going to be 1, one, my first thing I put down. And then my next fabric I'm going to sew is 2, and then 3, and then 4. And this really becomes quilting by numbers. So let's start with some fabric for fabric 1 which is going to be my background, which is a white. So I have my white here. Um, and so what I have to do is the back side of my, my template here, my foundation, is the backs is where the back of my fabric goes. So I'm just gonna lay this on here, line it up, because I need to be sure it's gonna cover all of this section 1A. And it is. So what I'm going to do is pin that in place. Now, um, some folks will say to glue. Certainly you can um, with a little bit of fabric glue. There is nothing wrong with that. Certainly fine to do that. And I'm just going to use a couple of pens. Now, just to help me see my angles a little better, I'm going to fold this back to where that... Um, line is to the start of number two that we just pressed and I'm actually going to um, go ahead and cut this uh, before we even get started because I, this is all extra fabric down here and I just don't need it there you know I'm not going to cut it ex exactly the as you know cut it exactly but just generally so we just have a little bit of carryover not a big carryover Okay, and then, so for C, ooh, okay, so I didn't use C or D. Hmm. Okay, so for this C2, or the second one for C1, let's see, let's see what we have here. This piece here should work fine. So we're going to take it, and again, I'm going to line this up so that it's right along this outside edge of what we trimmed off. Okay, so then we know I have the right angle, and then I'm going to just test it and kind of mock flip it over. Oh, and when I do, I can see I'm not going to get that point covered up that way. So let me do it the other direction and make sure. Yep, that's better. That's better. I had it going the wrong way. All right, so let's line this up. Make sure we're going to get everything. We are. So now what I'm going to do is stitch right on this line right here. Okay, to the sewing machine. And again, you are stitching on the line. No need to fear, just stitch on the line. Trying to get my camera to stay where it needs to be. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I might raise my presser foot up and we're going to stitch on this line. Now, I always start a little back from it and then stitch forward. And again, this works out really well until you've had a margarita or two for a drink. If you're doing paper piecing, you don't do margaritas. 
All right, so I've stitched on that line. I didn't do reverse back and forth because as long as I do a stitch or two over, I'm okay. All right, so now let's go back to our cutting. Okay, so here we are at the cutting. Now I'm going to take this and fold it back to the seam, all the way back to the seam. I'm going to add my add a quarter ruler and then we're just going to cut and trim it off. And we have just that little bit of waste. And then I'm going to take this and flip it over and press. Okay, so we're gonna to go to the pressing and just give it a quick press. There is that piece. Okay, now we're going to add some pink to that other side. Just like this pink and that citron together. So now here's what I'll do is I will fold this up here just like so. And I'm going to just kind of, not that line, I want this line right here this line right here. I'm just going to fold this back a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to um, make sure I have my angle correct and I'm on that fold line that we pressed. And I'm not worried about getting a perfect quarter of an inch. I'm just worried about cutting some of this excess off. Okay, so I've cut that excess off. So that's good. Now I'm ready to add my next piece. And I've got this big piece here. I don't need that big a piece, so we're just going to cut. And again, I don't really measure. I just kind of eyeball. Um, and then I leave the measuring that's done at the end. So then now we're going to take this and line it up on there, just like so. And now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. So here we're just on this straight seam right there, and we're going to make sure we got it all. Okay, just like so. Bingo, done. All right, now we're going to fold this back, fold it back, and then we're going to cut that excess off. And we'll do that over at the cutting table, which is just right next door to me. So what's great is when you get kind of a rhythm going, you can do back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it actually goes pretty quick. And then make sure you have your add a quarter ruler down. Okay. And then take that. And we are going to fold this over. Just like so. Look at that. Just beautiful and give it a quick press. Now we will take this and just fold it back a little bit. This is before we do the next piece. We're going to just take this and just kind of get kind of eyeballish close just to make sure we have that correct angle. I don't know what I'm hitting that I'm not going through everything, but fixed it that time. Third time's a charm. So now that's our point. Now we're going to add another big piece of white. So it's got to be a pretty good sized piece of white. I think, um, well, is that going to do? Nope, none of those are going to do. Well, we'll just do the green just so we keep going. Um, so we're going to put this green right here. We'll have a different piece in there. I didn't have another white handy. Sorry about that. But I had plenty of that. Okay. So we've got it lined up. We're going to stitch right on this line. So let's take it over to the sewing machine and stitch. And then we come back. We've stitched on our line. We're going to fold back. We're going to use our add a quarter seam. We're going to trim that. Take that. And again, for the purpose of this example, I just used some scraps that I had in the drawer. I didn't really study it out. So um, there we go. That's that piece there. Now let's press it and then we're going to trim. So now here is where we'd use our um, Creative Grids ruler. Okay, so we're going to come over here 
and we're going to line this up on the solid line. This solid line is our seam line, so we're going to go a quarter of an inch the other side of that seam line. Okay, so then we're going to trim that. We want to be sure we keep that quarter inch seam. And use plenty of hand strength on that because it does like to shift and move, which I don't particularly like that sometimes. Okay, now look at that. We have this great little unit right there. Isn't that pretty? Got a great unit. All right. So my friends, that is a walkthrough of how you paper piece. Now, if it is a regular paper that you're using, like a um, foundation paper, and it's actual paper, you will take that out before you long arm quilt it, or tie it, or hand quilt it, whatever you do. The project that I've been working on today, this is actually what's called, uh, it was printed on stabilizer. So this is actually gonna stay in the quilt, which is actually a little unusual, but that particular product was designed to stay in the quilt. Um, but yeah, you just sit down and take out all the paper at the end of the project. Um, I would leave all the paper in until the project is done and then sit down and take it all out. Um, you want to be sure you use a smaller stitch length, especially if you're using paper, because that smaller stitch length will per perforate your paper much better and it will cause um, the papers to come apart rather easy. So it, paper piecing is not something to be afraid of. It's a little bit different thinking because you're adding it to and then flipping it over, but it's not difficult. And I don't want anybody to be afraid of paper piecing. Um, kind of once you do it a few times, you know, get a sample, download something off of Google, um, and just do a sample of some of your Wonder Fabric and try it you might find that you really like it. I know one of our employees here, she tried paper piecing for the first time at a quilt retreat and fell in love with it um, because it went so fast. Um, and the, just the sharpness of the points that you were able to get was just incredible. So give it a try and uh, see what you think. All right, y'all have a great day and we'll see you later.